Coming right up, Straight Talk with Art Levine. Our guest tonight, Daniel Guerrero, Mayor of San Marcos, Texas, as we continue our 23rd anniversary year. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by the Port of Long Beach, a leader in international trade and environmental stewardship. And the Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Scan Health Plan, for your health and independence. Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We have a great show for you tonight. Our guest for the entire show is Mayor Daniel Guerrero, Mayor of the city of San Marcos, Texas. Mr. Weyer, welcome to Straight Talk. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate the invitation. Thank you for making the effort to fly all the way in from Texas to be with us today. And uh, we're excited to learn a little bit about your town and the state of Texas. Uh, uh, let me state for the record that San Marcos, Texas, a population of 55,000, is the fastest growing city in America and is tied for the lowest unemployment rate in America at 3%. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, how do you do it? Well, I think just to begin with, San Marcos is just a wonderful community and, and really holds a lot on its own, but certainly being located in between Austin in San Antonio, immediately on the I-35 corridor, having the fourth largest uh, university in the state of Texas, in Texas State University. It's a, it's a great location for folks that want to come and, and bring their families, bring jobs, uh, and we're a growing community, as you mentioned. Fastest growing city in the, in the United States for the last two years. Wow. Uh, and you are uh, uh, the mayor and were previously elected mayor in 2010 at the age of 33, so, and you are the youngest mayor in, this, in the history of the city. Yes, sir, absolutely. And the first Hispanic uh, mayor who was elected and re-elected. Yes, sir. In the past, our community, we, I mean, certainly we've always elected our, our, our officers um, at large, but so the mayor in the past had been selected by the colleagues. So I'm the first Hispanic mayor to have been elected at large at by the large. entire community. And then re-elected. Yes, sir. I was re-elected in 2012. And uh, you're only 38 today as we sit. 37. 37. Yes. And uh, uh, obviously with a, with a killer smile and you <laughs> love people and uh, the people care about you a lot. Well, we cer I certainly care about my hometown community. I'm born and raised San Marcos, went to San Marcos High School, graduated from what was then Southwest Texas State University, and it's now Texas State University, and just saw a calling uh, to, to serve my community on, uh, on the city council and now as mayor. And I noticed from your resume, you are, uh, there are dozens of committees and you are either on them, headed them or something. There's a real community uh, input to uh, what's happening in your town. Certainly. I think San Marcos has truly embraced a desire to be as transparent as, as, as uh, civically possible. And so we've certainly tried to do that. And as far as my involvement with various committees and commissions and boards, uh, again, it's just a, a call to service. So the servant leadership perspective that I bring and have brought to the community over a number of years uh, has helped me grow, has given me an opportunity to be able to contribute to my hometown as well. Well, I can't help but comment that we recently had a mayoral election here in Long Beach. Yes, sir. And our new mayor, Robert Garcia, is also young, 36. He also is Hispanic. Mm -hmm. And he also, I think, is a rising star, as are you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm looking forward to meeting your mayor yeah. as well. So let's talk about economic development. Uh, you were mentioning to me that there are a bunch of cities on this I-35 corridor that they're not... Austin, which is at one end, and they're right. not San Antonio. And those two cities are going to get certain business because they yeah. have what they have. But you guys are fighting for what for the rest, and, and you work together rather than compete. Tell us how that all works. You know, I think what we've seen is that certainly uh, the philosophy of a rising tide will lift all ships is the approach that we have taken. So back in 2009, the city of San Marcos decided that we wanted to take a lead in trying to create a regional uh, dynamic, a regional relationship when it comes to identifying new prospects for job creation and economic development. So working regionally, we've established what, was, what is referred to as the Greater San Marcos Partnership. 
initiative. And it's a two county initiative as well as a number of various uh, municipalities, smaller municipalities that are within that corridor that are part of the partnership as well as private investors that are also contributing to what we're trying to accomplish. And what we've been able to do is to work collaboratively, to work collectively, to, to showcase our assets, to showcase our workforce, our proximity to both the major metropolitan cities of Austin and San Antonio, to try to bring in new job creation opportunities uh, for the cities of Kyle, for the cities of Lockhart, which are smaller municipalities, and certainly that center of San Marcos, working with as well as Hayes County and Caldwell counties there in central Texas. And over these last five years, it's been very successful. So if any of you land a new business, you all we celebrate feel, collectively. You all celebrate. That's, Absolutely. You know, I don't know, uh, in, in California, as you may know, uh, there's vigorous competition between cities for the sales tax dollar. Right. Uh, auto malls, uh, retail businesses, the cities want that because they get a penny right. of each sales tax dollar. I don't know if that works, if that's the system in Texas. It's a similar system, and in fact, San Marcos is home to one of the largest outlet malls in the United States. Exit 200 along I-35 is one of the most utilized exit ramps in the United States, especially on I-35 as well. We have almost 14 million individual guests that visit wow. our San Marcos outlet malls on a yearly basis. And do you get a penny? Uh, uh, we get a ton of money, <laughs> for almost $24 million a year that yeah. comes through uh, the, that outlet mall, uh, that comes to the city alone. Yes. Uh, but I mean, it's been a tremendous asset that we've been fortunate to have for over 20 years. But certainly as other communities began to grow, we tried to assist them and work collectively to drive new job creation mechanisms towards those communities. And I know relationship with educational institutions is an important component. How does that work? Well, for St. Marcus, being home to Texas State University, we work on regular collaborations because uh, that's one of our main assets. When job prospects are looking at Central Texas and looking at San Marcos, that's one of the main resources that they're identifying for future workforce development, as well as uh, Edward Gary Job Corps, which is the largest job corps center in the United States, is also located in San Marcos, Texas. And then we work regularly with our school district. In fact, just two years ago, we were able to assist, uh, not immediately, but as assist uh, collaboratively in passing a $77 million school bond, which has helped bring a brand new pre-K facility, a brand new football stadium, and enhanced technology to our school district. You know, there's a parallel again with Long Beach because mm -hmm. uh, uh, our mayor uh, and our university work together and increasingly closely and uh, we believe that without a great city, you can't have a great university and vice versa. So the two are, are symbiotic in the relationship. Absolutely. And in fact, back in 1899, the, uh, the land that the university sits upon was originally granted from the city of San Marcos to ah. the institution for the development of the university. Nice. And it's really developed into a, a great relationship. Great investment. Okay, we'll be back with this wonderful interview with the mayor after these messages. At the Port of Long Beach, we're not only delivering jobs, smart ideas, and forward-thinking environmental initiatives. We're also delivering opportunity for all of Southern California. Oh, and a clearer horizon line. To learn more, go to polb.com, the port of Long Beach, thinking outside the docks.
There's a world of opportunity available through the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. Does your career involve legal work, law enforcement, fraud investigation, or crime scene analysis? You can increase your skill level and enhance your career by enrolling in the Basic Applied Forensic Science and Crime Analysis Certificate Program. For more information, contact the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. We're back with the mayor of San Marcos, Texas, the Honorable Daniel Guerrero. And in the current Straight Talk magazine, we have a nice article about uh, the mayor and a little bit about San Marcos. You may want to take a look. Let's talk a little more broadly about Texas. It's okay. well known that Texas is very, let's use the polite way, proactive <laughs> in seeking businesses from neighboring states or yeah. from anywhere for that matter to relocate in Texas. Uh, yes, sir. What's the core of their pitch? Well, I think when you look at Texas as a whole, it's a, a very uh, comparable uh, governmental uh, approach. I mean, we're, we're very pro-business. We're business friendly. N no uh, income tax, uh, state in income tax in Texas. And certainly Governor Perry has been very proactive, as you said, in visiting different communities throughout the United States and, and welcoming folks to come and visit Texas. Uh, so you offer low taxes, yep. uh, uh, a modest regulatory environment right. that doesn't uh, crowd business overly with environmental regulations, Correct. and uh, a welcoming attitude where you wine and dine prospective uh, relocating mm -hmm. businesses uh, and make them really feel wanted. And we have talent. I think that's the other thing that when you look at Texas as a whole, from the University of Texas to Texas State to Texas A&M, a multitude of different universities that are generating uh, folks with, with talent that are looking for opportunities and, and want to stay in Texas. I know in San Marcos, Texas alone, the 36,000 students at Texas State University uh, would certainly love to be able to stay in San Marcos or stay you know, at least we in the are state. We, we are addressing that same issue here at Long Beach State, right yeah. here on this campus where we have over 30,000 students, one of the largest in the state. And by the way, we had 88,000 people apply for 6,000 places last year. This is a very hot campus. But we want our graduates to stay here yep. and find jobs here and increasingly work with the business community uh, to offer them those jobs. And we're running into that same challenge and trying to bring new prospects to Central Texas. I mean, certainly Austin is a great destination, San Antonio, Houston, and Dallas. But if you're looking for a particular quality of life that San Marcos and Central Texas offer, bringing those jobs to our area is, is uh, one of our most, uh, our highest priorities. And your governor, Governor Perry, is really leading the charge he has been. for this, and his administration is very much reach out and Texas is open for business, to use the line. He has been, and, and not only is he crossing state lines, but he's gone across the pond as well to, to Asia and to Europe and, and different uh, communities throughout the globe and inviting people to Texas and letting them know that this is a great place to invest from, you know, the, from the border to the panhandle to the coastlines to West Texas. There's opportunities galore. But you need water, don't you? You certainly do. You and certainly you have a do. little bit of a water challenge. Now. Well, we've been in a drought for a good period of time. And, you know, I think San Marcos has certainly had made some early steps early on back in the 80s and 90s to address our local issues. And even today, we're working again regionally with some other municipalities, neighboring municipalities, to bring in new water to San Marcos for our residents in central Texas. And Texas as a nation, as a state, is also doing the same. Your governor is very popular, I understand, and he was a former legislator yes. before, and he's never lost an election, he's I He's never understand. lost an election. No, so sir. he must be doing something right. He's doing something right to begin with. I mean, he, he certainly, a, he understands politics, he understands his state, but he also has a sense of charisma. He has a sense of, of, of really inspiring folks, and as plain spoken, he's one of those guys, and you and I had this conversation, he's one of those guys that has that, you want to have a beer with him, you want to get to know yeah. him. Yeah. Well, as I mentioned to you, uh, when I I was out for a friend's graduation from SMU. We ran into him by accident, and he was so gracious to us and the graduates' family, total strangers. He spent 10 or 15 minutes dialoguing with us and just totally down to earth. Yeah. You know, we've been fortunate over many years to have uh, governors from all walks of the political spectrum. That if there's one particular uh, attribute that they all have, it's that it, that family comes first, and that if you're able to take care of Texas families, you're able to take care of Texas businesses. And as a whole, that's been able to help take care of Texas as a state. 
And uh, we've had a few presidents, as I recall, from Texas. We have. We certainly have. And in fact, uh, coming back to San Marcos and Texas State University, Texas State is the only school in the state of Texas to graduate a U.S. president in Lyndon Baines Johnson. Wow. Yeah. We're very proud of, we're very proud of, that, of that perspective. And he, as a senator, represented uh, the Hill people, as it were, where there was not electrification, yeah. and he was determined to raise the standard of living of these folks. He did, especially in the areas of education and civil rights. Uh, and, and my historical background on looking into LBJ as an alum and as a president, I mean, it was really his experience as a school teacher in Catula, Texas, where he saw young children, uh, minority children, Mexican-American children that were living po in poverty. And he knew that he wanted to take a leadership role in changing their quality of life and did so through all the different acts and approaches that he took as, as a politician, as a leader. And I understand that George W. Bush was also very popular with the Hispanic population. Yes, he was. And got tremendous political support. He sure did. He sure did. And, it, and for us in San Marcos, he paid regular visits as governor. Uh, we really appreciated his leadership as well as many of the other governors that we've had throughout the years. You told me an astounding fact uh, before we went on air that San Marcos is the longest continuously inhabited community in North America yes, sir. going back 14,000 years. Yes, sir. How did, uh, what's that all about? <laughs> well, it's, it's an amazing uh, acknowledgement of where our community truly lies from a global perspective. And the, the best way for me to describe it is just a few weeks ago, I took a glass bottom kayak tour on our beautiful San Marcos River. The headwaters of the river start in San Marcos and it ends in the Gulf of Mexico. And there have been artifacts from arrowheads to pottery, wow. to all sorts of things that have been found along the, uh, along the riverside and at the river base that can be traced back generations and to different eras of every civilization that has ever been discovered. Well, having worked in water for many years, water is life. Yes, and sir. civilization arose along the banks of the great rivers and oceans yeah. of our world. Absolutely. Okay, we'll be back and get up close and personal <laughs> with Mr. Mayor in our next segment. You won't want to miss that. How do you like your chances the rest of the way? I got no idea. But I do know that if we stay with Naples Rib Company, at least we won't go hungry. Coach, what do you think about some of those questionable calls tonight? Oh, yeah, but if you want a sound call, I'd call Naples Rib Company. You can't miss on that call. Then Naples Rib Company is part of your game plan? There really is nothing more motivating than a great barbecue meal at Naples Rib Company. Victory or not, Naples Rib Company, great game plan. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember. Polly's, 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. When I was a boy growing up in Italy, I had a dream to own in my own store. I came to the United States and I worked hard as a tailor. Hi, I'm Umberto. I've been in Long Beach since 1960, carrying the finest quality men's clothing. It was a long way away, but styles are just around the corner. Umberto, 2141 Belfar, Long Beach. I think the dancing started right around the time we got Charter. All of a sudden, he's downloading all these music videos and prancing around like some show pony. I even caught him dancing along to musicals on demand. I've never seen him so much as tap his foot. I just didn't get it. And then one day, I did. Get TV, internet, and phone for $29.99 each per month. Charter, make way for more. We're back with the mayor of San Marcos, Texas, uh, the Honorable Daniel Guerrero. I was perusing his resume. Dan, you've been on virtually every board, the Hayes Central Appraisal District Board, Citizens Utility Advisory Board, City Council Finance Audit Committee, uh, the Capital Area Council of Governments, <laughs> the county. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, you're an involved young man in your community. I try to be, absolutely. Yeah. 
And is that representative of the attitude in San Marcos generally of a lot of volunteer and participation? You know, that's an excellent question. I would definitely say so. Our, a lot of our community members are very involved, very civically active, whether it's in, in, in community leadership or in civic organizations and nonprofits. There's a number of different causes that I think people are very passionate about. As you know from being involved in education, uh, school districts depend upon parental involvement. Yes, a strong sir. PTA will make a school better. And it just occurred to me, maybe a lot of civic involvement with volunteerism makes a city better. It does. You know, uh, kind of coming back to my first few years back on the council as mayor, uh, coming in, I, I was kind of curious as to, well, what is it that I need to be doing? And really, I had mentors that said, do what comes natural. And for me, it was education. And so bringing my city manager, bringing our staff together and saying, well, we recognize that we're not the school district. We don't want the operational or managerial responsibilities of, of the school district, but we want to be champions for education and for our teachers and students. And we've helped bring together our school district, our university, Hayes County and the city of San Marcos to talk about critical community needs and to address them collectively. Bingo. And you can look at the talent at the mm -hmm. university to help the city solve some yep. of its problems, as we are here in Long Beach. Absolutely. I think early on and over the last four years, uh, we've, we've come together as a community and said, what are the most critical needs? And the first need that came about was pre-kindergarten education. The second one was out-of-school time program. Let me just interrupt you. Our mayor has just announced a robust program in pre-kindergarten yep. education. And we're doing the same. In fact, our, the, our brand new uh, pre-kindergarten facility, which will be a full day, uh, fully funded program, is being built right now and will open up at the beginning of 2015. Well, I need to absolutely put you in touch with our Mayor Garcia because there's love so, many, so many parallels. Now, in, in the real world, besides all of your civic involvement, you are a business development consultant. Yes, sir. Tell us what that involves <laughs> and what you do. I, it sounds like you're bringing business to Texas. Well, I, I, I'm kind of a matchmaker. I, I try to help companies that are wanting to do business with school districts, universities, community colleges, and municipalities. I help bring them together. And so through the relationships that I have, I'm almost like the, kind of like the match.com of, of various <laughs> industries industries and other, other, other entities that are wanting to do business together. Well, you're perfectly situated to do that because yeah. you must know so many people from yes, your sir. work in politics and everyone's trying to bring business yeah. to Texas and, and you're helping facilitate that. And, and in fact, one of the clients that I'm working with right now is, is from here in Southern California and I'm trying to assist them. Wow, and we're losing <laughs> another one. <laughs> what, what Maybe. And what they're doing is they're trying to make connections to school districts to help them raise money for school programs. And so I'm assisting them with that and I have that background. Well, as an outsider, and I know you don't have a huge amount of time here in California, but but from your outside viewpoint, what could we do better here in California to bring some of the businesses into our state and community? I think it all starts with communication. It starts with open communication and inviting folks to come and visit. There's been a number of relationships that I've been able to build with folks here in, in Southern California and throughout California that began with simply inviting, come and see Central Texas. Come and, and attend a football game. Let us take you out for dinner for some great barbecue, listen to some live music, maybe go to a race. And that's built some great relationships that I think in the future, not only will it help bring business to Texas, but will help bring opportunities and business to California as well. So it starts in the relationship nice. development. You know, let's start inviting some folks to the Queen Mary, yeah. to Disneyland, to Universal City, uh, showcasing some of our, just on a social yeah. basis. And then that leads to other things. And I think you, you, the key word that you hit there was the showcase and understanding what we have to offer here, uh, both in Central Texas and in Southern California, where the similarities are, where the opportunities may lie, and then build on those relationships. Let's talk a little bit about public service and uh, why and how you got into it. Okay. Uh, gosh, that's a that's a deep question there. I, it wasn't as though I was upset about something. I didn't feel as though I was going to come into office and fix everything. It was just a call to service. Uh, my family raised me to, to, to volunteer, to help those in need. And if I had a talent that could be used by others, to do so. And so it's kind of an altruistic philosophy that I have. Of you seem others. to embody the servant leadership concept Absolutely. that you're in there 
to do something, not to be someone. Right. And, and quite frankly, really going back, uh, the defining moment in my life is I'm, I'm a 32-year cancer survivor. So I was given a second chance. Wow. And so I'm not going to allow a day to go by that I don't give of myself for someone else or for a community. So, so that's you really what embody drives me. this concept of gratitude. You're Absolutely. grateful for the second chance. Absolutely. And I've noticed and I've written about this and I've observed it that the happiest people in the world are those that embody the philosophy of gratitude. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for all that. We'll be back with the rest of our show after these messages. Bill Trainees mixes California style with continental cuisine that includes fresh seafood from around the world. Since Bill is the chef, the menu has a wide variety of pastas, salads, soups, and appetizers that feature his unique personal touch. And the Italian-American signature dishes are simply beyond delicious. You never know who you're going to run into at Trainees, from the famous sports legends on the Wall of Fame to local celebrities having a drink at the bar. For the best fine dining experience, visit Phil Trainees. At Performance Plus Tire, you'll find we carry Toyo tires. For over 50 years, Toyo has been a world leader in the development of high-quality tires. Optimum performance, safety, and a comfortable ride. That's what makes Toyo tires great. And now come into Performance Plus Tire for a great deal on these Toyo tires. Proxies ST, Open Country AT, and Proxies 4. Toyo tires, driven to perform. Come in today and we'll install new Toyo tires on your vehicle while you wait. Performance Plus Tire on Cherry Avenue, one mile north of the 405 in Long Beach. who are closest to you, from our family to yours. McCarty's Jewelry, since 1932. There's a world of opportunity available through the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. Would you like to move ahead in the field of human resources and personnel management? Sign up for the Human Resources Management Certificate Program. You'll learn how to expand your knowledge and skills and advance in this dynamic industry. For more information, contact the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. I think Texas is very fortunate to have a mayor of the quality of uh, our guest, Daniel Guerrero, and we thank him so much for sharing his uh, insights and expertise with our audience. And maybe we here in California can learn a few things from, uh, from Texas uh, book and trade of uh, attracting jobs. And, and, and Dan, it's, it, it must be satisfying to see the results of your efforts. Well, I've certainly enjoyed being able to serve and uh, the various folks I've had a chance to, to meet with and interact with. And certainly, I think we would invite all folks to come and visit us in Texas. Here it is. And to, <laughs> and to come by and enjoy the, the things that we're doing there. I think Texas is a great state. California is wonderful as well. We've appreciated all the wonderful relationships and we look forward to being able to continue those. Mr. Mayor, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And thank you at home for being our guest. Please be with us next week for the next edition of Straight Talk. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Straight Talk has been brought to you by the Port of Long Beach, the Press Telegram, and Scan Health Plan. And remember, Straight Talk is viewable 24-7 at straighttalktv.com.